allow me to take us back past our normal reach to that mythic seductress and siren of all ages to the face that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium picture before you that face that temptation this woman who sold her kingdom for desire all praise be unto her zigzagging across the farce of temporal structure we find Eve laughing in the garden and a trail of two millennia of tortured women springing from her starry cunt the horror of Eve and her glory yet the Gnostics knew they had felt the snake for themselves they had seen the jealousy of the demiurge who racks young bodies with ancient pain they had seen what was at stake knowledge truth life gnosis verily to become a living god thus the moloch deity cursed her but we few have always known the truth and this truth it has a certain distinctive structure a pattern which can be traced throughout the ages levi strauss and those great monoculturals they had a point if only they had turned a face to face her for human experience tends to particular structures what else is culture but the calcification of these myth but their crystallization religion but their fossilization we approach the divine, the ineffable, the inexpressible, with a basket full of metaphors, some new, some well-worn, all tracing patterns upon patterns. We find the hexagram on a whiskey glass and project a tessellating tree of life. And we know our patterns. We know that dying gods rise again. We know whores have to be redeemed. But we do not always see the pattern of the shell for all of the crystal that surrounds it. So we turn to face Our Lady Helen of Tyre, she who is called Sophia, and bound all up with Helen of Troy. All for the sake of a name? Nay, for the memory of a legacy, a redemption. A redemption from what, one might ask? The innate sinfulness of 50% of the species? Precisely. From the crevice into which she has been thrust by the man who would be her saviour. And it is true. She is to be raised up from her filth. But verily I say to thee, not until she has given that priest the fair kadosh, not until her licence and lasciviousness and her vicious her unholy beauty has filled him with the diving fire. Then, transformed in the vision of her, then in the sudden confluence of the least and the highest, verily only then might he approach her. And seeing herself mirrored in his eyes, seeing herself transformed in his vision, she raises herself. No man places her upon the altar. Her chains are too heavy for any mortal hold. Nay, only a god shining with the godhead she has given him may assist her, may act as a handmaiden as she removes her golden chains, link by link. link by link, thread by thread, 
she removes them and lays them upon the altar. These secret mysteries, the truth of initiation, magic, sex, verily the truth of life itself, of all divinity and joy, these were forgotten, left to become half-truths. Thus we find the legend of Mary and of Mary, who are and always were one. What is the Magdalene but another wooden woman redeemed? But verily, it was Christ's vision of her, Christ's understanding of her, that gave him Godhead. What would the crucifixion be without the mourning, hysterical lovers, grouped around the bottom of the rood, to be showered in the rich, fresh blood that flows from his most holy wound? He, who would always be androgyny, Christianity would deny woman her place, place above her this monumental, statuesque, cunter's wound, divine androgyny, this jealous caricature of her redeeming, life-giving power. No wonder everything in Christianity comes with a catch. They are forever searching for something with the same power as the eyes of a woman. These secrets lay hidden. The great Gnostic sacrament became the bloody Cataic wound of Christ flowing into Magdalene's womb-like cup. To be hidden in the Templar palace, in the troubadour's plaintive song. When I was a child, I was obsessed with the circle knights and their holy quest. Yet the shame of Guinevere, the shame of a grain, they rang about my young ears, and I left the path of the sun to chase the fancies of the moon. And thus we stumble onto Kundry, and her realm of fantasy in her wicked prison cunt. But something had been lost in translation. Too much fear, too much jealousy. And though country may be redeemed, the truth has been forgotten. Look. See the way our pattern once again fills in the empty space. Initiation is not a single path, nor does it travel straight. No matter what the yearning Kabbalists would tell thee. It is two snakes wrapped around one another, twisting and turning. And we've spent two hundred years gilding one, while the other rots and withers, and takes on new and monstrous forms. We question and we cry, why is our world this way? We look in horror as though we do not understand it. We call our rapists monsters because we cannot call them brother. But our brother is what they are. For sex is our secret, it is holy, it is desecrated, and nothing in this world will change until we have restored our greatest sacrament unto its seat in the Holy of Holies. So let us play Medusa, Philomel, let us cry Jug Jug to unclean ears, let us scream and torture, let us be monstrous for the monster is closer to the gods than we are. I, I would rather be a minotaur than a worm. And look, for now she comes. Now she comes and there is nothing left to hold her. She has been working patiently with the silver file and now the final links and chains have been worn away. Our lady has traversed the darkness of the abyss. She has made her home here. She knows its every crack and crevice, has tended it 
as if it were a garden in the dark. Nulla. No woman. She who once was to be seen in every woman, every eye, is now to be found in none. And thus, there is nothing to prevent her glory reigning forth. There is no resistance. Her apocalypse has already come. Our Lady who treads upon this earth, hallowed be thy names. Thy queendom has come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily wine, and forgive us our stasis, as we forgive those who are trapped in their cages, and lead us into temptation, for we shall deliver ourselves from evil. In the name of the mother, and of the daughter, and of the fire kadosh, And we find ourselves before that ancient, novel tree, shining forth from the center of the flower. They told us that the lack of symmetry is the fault of her, and it is the path of him to redeem this fallen daughter, that we all might be redeemed. I say, you are making of the greatest, deepest mysteries of life something flat and plastic. There is no fault, no balance, no symmetry, only circuit and pressure. What is it that we are seeking to restore? Form, a lady of sorrows, she whose lord is chaos. We are not restoring equilibrium. We are not searching for equality, balance, the edge of the knife, nay, but the limitless, egoless lack of everything and lack of nothing, the refutation of all signifier through emotion, that which can only be achieved after a thousand years in that dark garden. We call it restoration, because we like metaphor. But this is not some finite process, but the very path of life itself. It is our ontology, the substance of being. For being is in communion, movement going, yes, the joy is in the going. Look at our mass, listen to our prophet. We are all nothing, everything. No man and no woman and every man and every woman and ants and grey worms squirming on the face of the open, desecrated earth. We must come to understand that things are not as they seem. The primary movement is that of the woman. It is she who calls, softly, imperceptible. She sings her siren song, the song of the cup, the song of emptiness to be filled, the sea cave calling to the water, fill me. Yes, she calls out the serpent power within him, and he rises to stand before her. Seeing the way she looks at him, he begins to feel the God within him, the God that she has called. The Godhead films him, and, shining forth from his eyes, he sees her, sees the power she has given him, and he looks at her with new eyes, and the chains and jewels of her whoredom become the chains and jewels of the office of the priestess. Now the pair can approach one another as gods, and the divine dance of rapture can begin. And listen, for I would tell you something that I see. Something that we 
having had that first snake rising, reject. We are self-sufficient, we cry. A magician need only work on his own. But we are wrong. Verily I say to thee that these two twining snakes lie in each of us, and none can consider themselves a magician until they have mastered the movement of both. Verily I say to thee that the work of the priest and the work of the priestess both lie inside of you. You may choose to emphasize one and lose the other, yet all your work will be as nothing. And yet, the twisting twists again, for though these two may lie inside of you, it is a very rare magus indeed who can achieve this transcendent dance alone. Why do we fear the other so? I tell you, that fear is the source of all of our problems, and I tell you that fear is the source of all of our joys. How can we not fear the God in the other, mortal as we are, and fear is our stimulus. Oh, why must we fear so? For it is quite the most natural thing, this fear. And in refusing, in refuting it, in leaping forward into the mouth of the abyss, falling to that sneaky voice that says, Jump! Crash the car, fall from the bridge, drown in the sea. In falling, we do not reject fear, but embrace it. We revel in it, dive into the inky black coated in the white fat of fear. Only then may we become fearless, as the gods are. Only then might we become gods. So rise. Son, raise your daughter, and in that lift from the hips and the setting upon the altar, feel a circuitry enacted a thousand thousand times before. The primary manifestation of worship, the primary manifestation of godhood, the primary manifestation of man. There is naught else, naught else but the infinity moment of kill or be killed, as one contemplates the eternal abyss hidden within the skin of the other. There is only fear and unknowing until the leap is made and the guard called to and the seeker falls without a hope. Only then might the guard be called to catch. Oh, my Nulla, she who tends the garden in the night. See how these invisible flowers grow, golden. Sing to the nighttime birds, Nulla, for he will come, thy lord, chaos.